Okay, I'm sorry for all of you Terraform lovers, but I really had to make this video because I don't understand why people keep using Terraform for AWS projects, even for new projects, when there is something that I feel is so much better, which is the AWS CDK. In my six years working here in Japan as a software engineer, I've used both of them, Terraform and the AWS CDK on production level projects. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why I think the AWS CDK is better, but I'm gonna try to highlight the strong points of each one of them so you can choose which one is better for you. In fact, I introduced the AWS CDK on the company that I'm working right now. And now the AWS CDK is starting to become the default for new projects. And they're even migrating some recent small projects from Terraform to the AWS CDK. Now let's take a look at why. But first let me start with the basics on how to work with infrastructure as code on AWS. If you already know all this, feel free to use the chapters down below to skip to the part that you want to watch. So we all know that we can go to the AWS console and start building our infrastructure for our project with the GUI that they provided for us. But what you can also do is create templates for your infrastructure. And this is called Infrastructure as Code or IAC. And there are many benefits on doing so. For example, you can have version control. You can have a full history of how your infrastructure is changing, why it changed and who changed it. You can also use the template to deploy the infrastructure to multiple environments. It's really common to have like a dev, a staging and a production environment for your project. And having your infrastructure templated also reduces human error on deploying the infrastructure. And you can also reuse parts of the templates of older projects on your new projects and reduce the time it takes to set up the project. And these are just a few examples. There are many other benefits on using infrastructure as code for your project. Yeah, and the default native way of doing infrastructure as code on AWS is through CloudFormation. You can write CloudFormation templates on JSON or YAML files, and you can also write simple logics inside of it, like having a few parameters that you're gonna use within your template, join a few strings or substitute something on a string, make some simple conditional statements or get some values from different resources and other stuff as well. And when you deploy your template to AWS, it's gonna appear as a CloudFormation stack that you can see all the events that happen inside of it. If some errors happen, it's gonna appear here as well. And you can also see all the resources that have been deployed through this stack with the links that sends you directly to the resource itself. And if you delete the stack, everything that was deployed through this stack is gonna be deleted as well, unless you have the deletion policy set to retain. So yeah, these are the basics of CloudFormation. But if you use CloudFormation before, I think we can all agree that writing directly in CloudFormation can be a real pain. Maybe you could compare it to writing a web application in vanilla JavaScript without using any frameworks. But to fix that, we have some tools to help you write your infrastructure templates. And Terraform is one of the most used ones. So let's take a look at it. You can install Terraform very easily for a lot of operational systems. After you do that, you're gonna want to install the Terraform plugin for your IDE. This is gonna help you with auto-completion and syntax highlighting. And the plugin for VS Code has a very bad review score. And this is understandable because I also had a lot of problems with this extension. When I used it before, I actually had to downgrade to an older version to make it work. But at least right now, it seems to be working fine on the latest version. And after that, you can start creating your main file template. First, you need to set up the AWS provider. Then you're gonna write your resource template. And finally, you can initialize your project. You can also use Terraform for providers different than AWS, like the Google Cloud Platform or the Microsoft Azure and many other providers out there. And there is also some simple logic that you can write inside your template like conditional statements or looping through a list or something like that. And they are a lot easier to use than when you're writing a native CloudFormation template. And if you want, you can also break down your template files into multiple files to better organize your code. And you also have access to a bunch of third-party custom configurable modules for your template, which are basically infrastructure template blocks that you can install and use inside your template. For example, you can use this VPC module to create a fully set up VPC with good default configurations inside your project. And yeah, when you have your template ready, you can go ahead and set up the credentials for your account on the terminal and just deploy it to the cloud. And one big difference about the deployment of Terraform in comparison to the other solutions out there is that it does not use CloudFormation on the background. Instead, it uses the AWS SDK to deploy which means that all of your infrastructure state is not organized in a CloudFormation stack. Instead, it is in a local file. And you need to make sure that all your team members that are deploying with Terraform have the latest state file on their machine. 
otherwise you might run into some really bad problem. You can also set up Terraform to use the state file in the cloud to make sure that everyone on your team is using the latest version. It is a little more work to set it up, but if you're working with multiple people, I highly recommend you to do so. But on the bright side, using the SDK also means that the deployment is a little faster. Ok, now let's take a look at the AWS CDK. And the main concept here is that you can use a language that you're familiar with to write your templates and to deploy it to the cloud. You can use any of these programming languages written here. The one I use and recommend is of course TypeScript, but if you prefer a different one, feel free to use it. You can use a node command to initialize your CDK project and just start writing your template. And since you're using an actual programming language, you have full flexibility on the logic behind your template. If you want to do some asynchronous logic to maybe call an API and get a value from the API and use it inside your template, you can definitely do that. Ok, let me give you an example of a simple template here. This is how you would write a VPC. Not only the VPC resource, but everything that comes with it, like public and private subnets on all of the availability zones, the necessary routes to connect the subnets and the net gateways to give internet access. All of this is built with this one line. And if you want to customize it for your specific use case, you can also pass in a configuration object here. This is what's called a layer 2 construct. It's a pre-made template with good defaults that you can override and customize for your needs. There are also layer 1 constructs, which are constructs that just mirror the CloudFormation specs. And layer 1 constructs are automatically generated, so they're basically always up to date with the latest CloudFormation specs. And if you need, you can also install some third-party constructs that someone else made for some specific use case. And another great thing here is that everything is strongly typed and you have a lot of information within your IDE. For example, if I just hover here on the subnet configuration, I can see what the public configuration is doing. And I can also change here and see that the private configuration creates a net gateway and that the isolated option is a subnet without any internet connectivity. It's super great to have all this information within your IDE. And if I want to use this VPC for another resource inside my template, for example, let's say I want to create an EC2 inside of that VPC, I can just put this VPC into a variable and use it for the EC2 instance. And if the VPC was in a completely different stack and I still wanted to use it inside this template here, I can do it with the lookup function. Most resources have a lookup function that allows you to grab the information directly from your AWS account and use it inside your template. And yeah, finally, when you want to deploy your template, you can just set up your AWS credentials and use the deploy command. It's gonna warn you before for some security changes and if you press yes, it's gonna deploy it to CloudFormation. And you can see here the CloudFormation template it generated for us. And if you go to the CloudFormation console, you can also see the stack being deployed. So yeah, this would summarize the basics of the AWS CDK. And yeah, there was a lot of information in this video. So let's conclude by listing up the advantages for each of these frameworks. Let's start for the AWS CDK. First, you can use a programming language that you're familiar with. And since you're using an actual programming language, you can also build complex logic for your templates. The CDK constructs have a lot of nice methods that facilitate a lot building templates. It is strongly typed and the auto-completion works great. You have a lot of information inside your IDE. And the templates are organized in a CloudFormation stack. Now let's go to the Terraform advantages. And the main ones I can think of are that the deployment time is faster and that you can use it for providers that are not AWS, like GCP or Microsoft Azure. Usually deployment speed for infrastructure is not a priority, but if you really like the way Terraform deploys your infrastructure and you don't want to use CloudFormation for your templates, then good thing that HashiCorp, the company behind Terraform, also noticed the potential of the AWS CDK and made a CDK for Terraform, which I've never used so I cannot say from experience, but it seems that you can just write a CDK template and deploy it with Terraform instead of CloudFormation. But I personally like to have my templates organized in a CloudFormation stack. So yeah, this is my take on why I prefer the AWS CDK over Terraform. But I also want to know your opinion. Do you agree or disagree with something I said? Feel free to leave your opinions in the comments down below or reach me up on Twitter. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It helps a lot the channel. And if you want to watch more of my content, don't forget to subscribe as well. See you in the next one. Janet.